So everybody, welcome back for this week's tech tips. Um, so if we look here, you can see my oscilloscope right now. The yellow line is my input signal, and the blue line is my output signal. And they're both on the same scale of one volt. So my first testing is coming across not as fun as I'd like, because if you look, it is out of phase like it's supposed to be because I'm you know taking it off the anode outward. But my output is really low. It's like they're the same scale. So this is one volt in, and that's the peak. Well, one one volt per grid, but you know one volt. And, and there's and this angle, I can't see it very well, but probably about five. So we're talking about four or five volts input. The output is coming out at maybe one volt. So I'm losing gain instead of gaining. But uh, at least I know that the tube is working. There's another weird thing is this, this signal that's coming across that's kind of that funny, bumpy thing is a bit weird. Now, I think it's possible I'm also near cutoff because one of the things that we'll look at is I can put this now in, scale, in front of the screen. Let me make sure that's readable. Yes, it looks like it is. If I connect that across the cathode resistor, uh, let's see, let me put it on regular volts, and then I touch that there, it's running at about 3.6 volts. And I have a 250 ohm cathode resistor, so 3.6, divide that by the 250, and I get a very low number. Let me just do the, the math really quickly with you here. Um, the, uh, pull my calculator up, and we've got 3.6 volts divided by 250 equals uh, so I'm you know across the cathode I'm only pulling out about what well, I guess that's actually 14 actually that's the they're saying that they want the max dissipation to be about 12 milliamps so actually this is a little bit high in the dissipation it's so 14 milliamps but I am definitely not sure if there's something else going on well, one of the things that's odd to me I had to lower the voltage down the max voltage you'll see here then go across the uh, to the anode so my ground point here my ground reference I get in there and I come up to the anode and I'm running at just under 200 volts. The reason I did that is I was doing 300 initially. I've been doing a little experimenting, but my voltage dropping resistance that's supposed to bring it to the grid is, is basically dropping next to nothing. If you look here, it's 193 versus on the other side of it, 195. It's dropping like two volts across a 200 and something. Uh, well, no, so it's about a 500 ohm resistor. Uh, maybe that's normal for that. I, I might need a higher resistor, but I need to drop that screen voltage a little lower so that it will work but for you know this in this case it could be maybe the tube isn't good I don't know but that other thing that's kind of weird is if I move this out of the way you look see that other signal that kind of seems to be riding across it that, that might be just noise that I'm introducing I don't know we'll say bump this I don't know what happened there there we go um, so at least we can say this circuit is working it is not working optimally so I'm gonna personally have to spend some time debugging and trying to figure that out but I want you to see at least this is a functioning circuit on the breadboard on this pentode. Um, I really do would love to see it running a little hotter than that, but it is giving me output. So, um, and I'd love to understand why it has that amount. Oh, look, that's interesting. It's almost like I'm interfering with this in the air around. I don't know. Anyway, um, so for whatever reason, the output is coming out pretty weak. Uh, I, I double checked that my, um, this guy is set on 10x. And I've got it set, as you can see on the blue one. That's the I think that's the active one now. It is. It is also set on 10x. So, sorry, I'm trying to do this very carefully. Make sure I hook this in because I'm talking at 300 ish volts. I don't want to. There shouldn't be 300 volts there. Actually, there should be little to no volts there because of, that's the coupling capacitor. So I'd have to go to DC volts. I mean, from to AC volts. If we look, this is how many volts. I can actually compare this as well because this is before the coupling cap. AC volts. I'm getting it about only 0.6 volts on the output. But if I look at the input, which is this guy, I have 1.5 volts. Oh, I guess, huh. Maybe my oscilloscope is set a little weird. I've got 1.5 volts uh, AC on the input running, uh, you know, if I was to do hertz, we'd see what the frequency is. I can't remember what I said the frequency is. But on the output over here, I actually am getting, how did I say 0.6 volts? I guess that's 0.6 volts. Yeah, so that's weird. I, I, input, Again, we're putting in 1.5 volts output. We're getting a half a volt. So I'm losing gain. Not uh, so. There's something definitely a bit weird. So I will have to troubleshoot and play with it. And we'll see if we can sort out what it is. If anybody has any suggestions, let me know. I'm gonna close it up a little bit more on the actual hookup again, and we will talk about that a little bit as well. So last week I showed you I had it set up, but I didn't get to play with it. This week I'm playing with it a little bit, which is nice. But let me get my chopstick out, and we'll go through what's going on here. I have a sign signal coming in that is connected right here. Uh, that then is going into the, the input grid, which is pin uh, 
let's see, six, seven, four, I think that's correct. Uh, I'll throw an overlay up here of the of the tube pinout, but pin four is my input going through. Just I, th I have a 33k resistor, dropping resistor, kind of a typical one, and I'm reading my input, and that's what you're seeing on the sine wave we were looking at earlier. Um, I have a ground connection that jumps from three, which is grid three, over to ground cathode, which is five, and then comes over and connects into this, which then connects to my 250 ohm resistor, and then I just have a, I think it's a 25. Uh, a microfarad capacitor as well to provide the capacitance uh, to ground as well. Then I'm connecting all other grounds pretty much that I'm doing through to this guy. I have under here a 500 ohm resistor that is my screen resistor that I'm, I'm trying to take the high voltage which I'm jumping from here straight to there and then over. I have this outputting also into about a 60, I think it was, I don't remember what it was, I think it was a 180k resistor reading the data sheet. It said that it should be about 100, I think 120 or 140k load that it should go into. So if I'm adjusting the load a little bit, this, this should still be okay with it, I think. But it's possible I have a load mismatch, and that's why that's kind of being weird. So that's another thing, uh, and this is something I'll try, maybe I can even draw a quick schematic of this but I, and put that up as well. But I have a, a resistor that connects at the uh, from this side. Um, wait, where is it? I'm trying to think. No, it connects from the other side of this, this, resist, or this capacitor, which is my coupling capacitor where my output is to ground and it's giving me the load, quote unquote. So I would definitely, normally that would say be a transformer that then goes into a speaker and the transformer is just changing that impedance that the speaker is reflecting back to it. But I'm just giving it the direct impedance as it expects as a static resistor in this case because it needs a load of some kind on the tube. So that's what I'm giving it. Now I may be doing this erroneously because maybe I'm not supposed to have a coupling capacitor between it. So maybe I'm supposed to connect that resistor from here. But obviously something's working or I wouldn't be getting my, my um, my sine wave output coming out. It is coming out. It's just giving me some kind of weird riding wave across the top of it, and it's dropped by half instead of gaining it. So my gain is 0.5 instead of, say, 20 or 30. So there you have it for this week. I will um, research a little bit more. Um, this, to me, is kind of an experiment learning ground, and hopefully it teaches you tech around how we can start, any of us can start prototyping and creating new tubes, or new, new amps based on any tubes we find that might be available. This is a pentode, it does magnify, and this might work if I continue to sort this out as being a good, you know, qualified bedroom amp, because it only puts out a couple of watts of total output, like two or three for this tube. So it might be good for a quiet bedroom type uh, play or whatnot as the output, pent output pentode, or it might be good also as an input pentode. We'll have to kind of play with that and see. So the next one we're going to do is I'm going to try and order and get in the parts for instead of an 8-pin, there's this, this, the 9-pin ones that we talked about at the beginning of these series as well. And we'll see if I can sort out a way to get some test input and output for those as well. But in the meantime, I will try and spend some time playing with this, seeing if I can figure out what's going wrong with it and why it's only giving me half the output that I'm putting into it. And we'll go from there. So, all right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining along in the ride, and we will talk to you soon. Cheers. Give me a like, thumbs up, and a subscribe.